I suppose I should start this video with a disclaimer. So a few months ago, I put up a poll asking you guys what game I should cover next, and Silent Hill Origins for the PSP won by quite a distance. Unfortunately though, things didn't quite go to plan. Oh my god, would you move? Why is this game running so fucking slow? Oh my god, please don't do this to me. Please don't make me actually have to pay money for a game. So for now, that video is on the back burner. Instead, I hope you enjoy this review of a really spooky... I can't do fucking intros. Alone in the Dark, The New Nightmare is a survival horror game developed by French studio Darkworks and released in 2001 for the PS1, Dreamcast and PC. There was also a fucking horrific Game Boy Color version that while impressive from a technical standpoint, I guess, is an absolute nightmare to play and should not be approached under any circumstance. For this review, I played the PC version, which I purchased from good old games. While mostly a competent port, I instantly noticed something was very wrong the second I started the game up for the first time. Hey wait a minute, the cutscenes aren't working. Yeah, so unfortunately, while the game played pretty much flawlessly on my laptop, most of the cutscenes would not work properly for me. Thankfully however, even though it took a long time, I was able to find a patch online that fixed this issue entirely, and now the game's cutscenes play without issue. Alone in the Dark The New Nightmare was received relatively well, at least on PS1 and Dreamcast. However, some critics thought the game borrowed too many of its mechanics from other popular survival horror games from the time, like Resident Evil and Silent Hill, which is kinda hilarious when you consider that the original Alone in the Dark kinda created the whole survival horror genre to begin with. Nevertheless, Alone in the Dark The New Nightmare would go on to sell over a million and a half copies by 2005, which is no small feat. I haven't played The New Nightmare in well over a decade, but I recall having very mixed feelings about the game upon finishing it for the first time. So I'm looking forward to finally diving back into this title to see if my thoughts have changed in the years since. The new nightmare begins with one of our protagonists, Edward Carnby, listening to a voice message left by one of his friends named Charles Fisk. In the message, Charles informs Edward that he is traveling to a place called Shadow Island in order to investigate some ancient tablets that have apparently been discovered there. However, a few days later, Fisk is found dead, and so Ethan agrees to carry on his investigation in order to discover more about these dangerous tablets and what ultimately caused his friend's death. Accompanying Edward on his investigation is Aline Seedrak, a university professor who apparently has knowledge of the tablets and how to translate them. While on the plane ride to Shadow Island, Aline has a nightmare where she sees her father as a monster, and you can really hear the horror in her voice once Edward wakes her up. Miss Cedrak? Aline? Wake up. What? Oh, sorry. Excuse me. Shortly afterwards, the plane is struck by lightning, forcing Edward and Aline to jump from the plane and parachute onto Shadow Island. Aline lands on the rooftop of a spooky mansion, while Edward lands in the woods, quite a distance away from the house. It is here where you are brought to the character select screen. Similar to something like Resident Evil 2, there are two campaigns in the new nightmare. And while Edward and Aline will mostly visit the same locations, you will have to solve vastly different puzzles and deal with different enemy types depending on which character you choose. Alone in the Dark The New Nightmare is a shockingly short game, so if you are going to get your money's worth, you'll want to play through the campaign at least once with both characters. Anyways, I decided to use Edward for this review. Thankfully, this first area is entirely enemy free, which gives you the time and space to get accustomed to the game's controls, which you will have to do if you are not used to how classic survival horror games play. 
Edward and Aline soon get in touch with each other through walkie talkie and agree to meet up at the house. Edward and Aline have several conversations throughout the game and oh boy, are they ever a treat to listen to. Aline, I thought you were dead. I did too. I'm not cut out for this kind of place. I want this to stop right now. I understand. You understand? You understand? You don't understand anything. I landed in some woods about a hundred yards from the manor. Can you see me? See you? How could I? Help me for Christ's sake. Don't move. I'll come free you. Is that the best you can do? Yes, that's the best I can do. Well, okay then. At last. I want you to tell me what's going on. I don't know yet, but I do love your new outfit. It makes you look less, uh, you know... Yes, I know. Guys, please stop. The sexual chemistry between you two is simply too much for me to handle. If you were a steak, you would be well done. Thanks. Yeah, you're just really pretty. Anyways, getting back to the story, Edward begins exploring the woods but it isn't long before he finds a blood trail leading towards a nearby building. Edward finds a mortally wounded man inside the house, who warns him to leave the island while he still can. Edward promises the man that he will come back with help, but upon leaving the house, he realizes that might not be necessary anymore. So as many of you will have figured out by now, Alone in the Dark The New Nightmare uses tank controls for character movement, which will instantly turn many people off ever playing this game. Obviously I'm well used to this control scheme by now, so had no issues moving Edward throughout the game's various environments, but I thought it important to at least mention that if you have never played a classic survival horror game before, The New Nightmare will feel torturous to control at first. Anyway. It isn't long until Edward finds himself face to face with a pack of ravenous dogs hell bent on tearing him limb from limb. If you want my advice, you should run away from these dogs instead of engaging them. You will want to save every bullet you can during the first few hours of the game. Trust me on that. Edward eventually arrives at the manor, but finds that the front gate is locked, so he decides to look around for another way in. This is when he notices a strange looking creature feeding on the corpse of a dog nearby. In the next area, Edward finds a water wheel that allows him access to the mansion's sewer system. Before he can enter the sewer, however, he is attacked by the creature from earlier. It is very hard to run by this enemy, so you are pretty much forced to fight it. And as you can clearly see, certain enemies can take an absolute age to kill, which is why it's important to hold on to ammo whenever possible, as it is very easy to run out after only killing a few enemies. Anyways, after defeating the creature, Edward enters the sewers, but it isn't long before he's cornered by yet another... uh... terrifying beast? To be honest, it's kinda hard to tell what this thing is even supposed to be with these PS1 era graphics. This is the game's first mini-boss, and you won't be able to leave this area until it is dead. It's an easy enough fight though, just wait until it pops out of the water and shoot it. Once the monster is dead, Edward proceeds through the sewer and arrives at a cellar-like area. He finds a coffin in the cellar and decides to open it up. Never really understood the purpose of that scene to be honest, but whatever. Edward finds a key in the coffin, which unlocks a nearby door that leads to the main hall of the manor. Before Edward can begin exploring the house, however, he needs to free Aline, who is trapped in a room hidden behind a wardrobe. Hey, I can hear you. Can you see what's blocking the door? I think it's just a chest of drawers. Well, then push it aside. Oh, I can't take much fucking more of these two. Edward and Aline meet up, and after a very short and painful conversation, they once again split up, and Edward begins exploring more of the manor. He soon meets a mysterious man named Edensaw, and this interaction is genuinely one of the funniest scenes in the game. Wait, wait, I didn't come here to fool around. I came to investigate Fisk's death. I do not know who you are talking about. Charles Fisk. 
fifty-ish, about six-one, graying hair. I still do not know who that is. You see, nobody's come to Shadow Island for months now. Okay, that's about enough of this. Oh, God. <laughs> Fuck this game. The New Nightmare might be the most unintentionally hilarious game ever made. Nothing in recent memory has made me laugh as much as this fucking game. <laughs> okay, well I guess that wasn't too long ago, but you get my point. Anyways, once Eden saw... Moon walks away from us, we are finally free to play the game without being distracted with cutscenes every two minutes. This is where the new nightmare truly begins in my opinion. The map opens up massively at this point, and you are free to explore the mansion at your own leisure. Similar to most games in the survival horror genre, the new nightmare combines metroidvania style exploration with logic based puzzle solving and occasional combat. As you might expect, the mansion is filled with all types of horrific creatures and you will have to pick your battles carefully if you are going to survive. I suppose I should highlight my biggest grievance with the new Nightmares combat system, and that's the fact that enemies have a nasty habit of respawning in an area after you have already killed them. I was shocked the first time I cleared out a room of monsters, only to see them back the next time I entered the area. So even though you are given a decent amount of ammunition to defend yourself with, it doesn't really matter since you'll waste most of it killing the same enemies over and over again anyway. Combat can become really monotonous when you are forced to clear out the same room several times over in a single playthrough. Enemies in the new nightmare also love to perform this amazing trick where they magically appear from thin fucking air. Let me use this hallway as an example of what I mean. Now I want you to focus on this area within the box here. Can you see any zombie like creatures waiting to eat my face off? No? Me neither. So I guess it's safe to proceed- Oh, where the fuck did he come from? At first I thought that my mind was playing tricks on me, so I loaded up the area again, but this time decided to use my grenade launcher to kill the enemy before proceeding. So I guess he must not- No, no, there he fucking is. What? What the fuck? Enemy AI is functional for the most part, but every now and then a monster's pathfinding will completely fuck up and you're treated to this. <laughs> Look at this fucking moron. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Ah! When entering a new area for the first time, you will frequently find yourself being attacked by an enemy before you have even been given a chance to react. I mean, look at that, the fuck was I supposed to do there? I hate complaining so much about this game's combat, because there is still fun to be found in gunning down these creatures. There is a wide arsenal of weaponry in the game, and they are all fun to use. There's the Magnum, a triple barreled shotgun that absolutely destroys most enemies in only a few shots, a grenade launcher and a rocket launcher that will one shot pretty much anything apart from bosses. My favourite weapon, however, has to be the Plasma Cannon. It has a very short range, but absolutely obliterates any enemies in its path. You obviously won't be spending all your time shooting monsters in the new nightmare, however. In between combat, you'll explore the mansion, trying to find keys to unlock doors, and solving some pretty clever puzzles. The puzzles are probably my favourite aspect of the new nightmare as it feels like some genuine effort was poured into their design. Some puzzles are easy enough, like one where you fill a flask full of water and then put it on some scales in order to unlock a mechanism, but a lot of the puzzles ended up stumping me for a decent length of time. One of the first real puzzles in the game requires you to enter a code on this statue. I spent over an hour scouring the mansion for the code, but couldn't find it anywhere. Then I noticed some marks on the floor, hinting that the statue may have been moved at some point. I attempted to push the statue, and voila, it slides a few feet forward. More importantly, however, I noticed that the code was actually on the back of the statue the whole time. Pretty clever stuff. If you ever get completely stuck on a puzzle, it's always worth referencing any documents you've picked up, 
as many of them contain the solution to solving a certain puzzle. For example, I was stuck on this book puzzle in the library for ages until I figured out that the solution was in a document I picked up ages ago. I also appreciate that any important information in a document will always be highlighted in red, which saves you from having to read dozens of pages looking for the solution to a certain puzzle. However, while I do enjoy many of the puzzles in this game, some of them are just complete bullshit and seem designed simply to waste your time. For example, the first time Edward enters the attic, he will receive a call from Aline, where she informs him that there is a key hidden under some creaky floorboards nearby. Sounds simple enough, right? The problem is that you can't hear the creaky floorboards, because the game's fucking music is so loud that it just drowns out everything else. Worse still is that if you run through this area, the sound of the floorboards creaking usually won't trigger for some reason. So basically you need to walk very slowly through this area with the music volume turned way down to have any hope of finding these creaky floorboards. Once you do, you use a crowbar to remove the boards and receive a key. What a bullshit puzzle. And anyways, who buries stuff under the floorboards like that? No one asked for your opinion, Michael. There was also this late game puzzle that stumped me for so long that I had to look up the solution online and my jaw nearly hit the floor when I saw what you were actually supposed to do. However, puzzles like this are very rare and for the most part, I enjoyed most of the brain teasers found within the new nightmare. A good horror game is nothing without an eerie foreboding soundtrack to keep you on your toes at all times. Which is why it's so strange that Alone in the Dark did not receive one. However, while the new Nightmare soundtrack is horrific in all the wrong ways, I simply can't find anything to complain about when it comes to this game's visuals. The new Nightmare is simply a fantastic looking game, even to this day. I mean sure, the character models and real time assets have aged terribly, but I don't think anyone can deny that this game has some of the most stunning pre-rendered backgrounds ever designed for a video game. Each room is absolutely dripping in jaw-dropping detail and I had to stop myself several times to simply admire the artwork on display in this game. Even though I have several complaints with the new nightmare, I can still appreciate the amount of effort that must have gone into crafting this world. One issue I have with the PC port of this game specifically is that there doesn't seem to be any controller support. I tried several of my controllers with the game, but none of them seemed to work. So unless there's a fix for this issue that I don't know about, be prepared to have to play the entire game on keyboard. The key bindings are also kind of strange now that I think about it. For example, you'd think that to reload your weapon you'd simply press the R key, but pressing R causes Edward to call Aline using his radio, which is not the kind of thing you want Edward to be doing when he's surrounded by monsters. I also can't talk about this game without mentioning its incredible for the time lighting system. Edward has a flashlight that you can freely aim in any direction, which is invaluable in helping you illuminate dark areas. It is such a stunning effect to see real time lighting realistically illuminating pre-rendered backgrounds, and I can't think of many other games that have effectively replicated this effect since. Avalanche Reviews goes more in depth on how the developers managed to achieve these fantastic lighting effects using pre-rendered backgrounds, and I'd recommend you check that video out. I'll put the link to it in the description. Unfortunately, while the new Nightmare is a mostly competent if unremarkable survival horror game for the majority of its runtime, towards the end of the adventure, the new Nightmare ditches any pretense of being an old school survival horror game and instead opts to become a boring, linear corridor shooter for its final act instead. You are given all the ammunition you need to gun down waves of the same tired old enemies you've been killing the entire game, and my god is it ever monotonous. It feels like the developers were running out of time to complete the game, and so instead of giving us more clever puzzles and interesting level designs, they instead had to resort to giving us endless linear hallways and uninspired combat. It really is an unfortunate way to end the game, and leaves a really sour taste in the mouth once you've completed it. One thing I wasn't expecting from the new nightmare was for it to be genuinely scary at times. 
Despite feeling quite dated from a visual and audio perspective, the game did manage to startle me on more than one occasion. The game's fantastic use of lighting also helps create a foreboding atmosphere at times. I mean, don't get me wrong, this isn't Outlast or Alien Isolation. You won't be cowering under the bedsheets while playing the new Nightmare. But for a 20 year old survival horror game to still be this effective at spooking the player is genuinely surprising. The new Nightmare is not a hidden gem or misunderstood masterpiece. It is, however, a surprisingly enjoyable old school survival horror game, filled with clever puzzles and fun exploration. If you can get past the terrible voice acting and occasionally unfair combat, you will find a competent survival horror game to while away a few hours with.